real quick, the other news uh, that came out, uh, Cleveland signs Jadavian Clowney. So Jadavian Clowney's starting to feel like a hired gun. One year, every everywhere he goes, one-year contract, just there to be paired across from Miles Garrett. You're an AFC South guy. Talk to me about how this makes you feel about, you know, because Cleveland's defense is good, man. And and the yeah. additions that they've made, you know, in the secondary now, and, man, does this worry you at all? Because, I mean, I understand Jadavian Clowney isn't exactly what – hasn't lived up to where he was drafted, right? Yeah. And 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 ultimately, he's actually much better in the run game than he is actually as a pass rusher, which is something that nobody saw coming when it came out when he came out of college. So, how does this make you feel? Does this make you, you know, a little bit more nervous that, you know, Ben Roethlisberger is going to have to watch from both sides now? The thing with Jadevian Clowney is that yes, I think that he's been very overhyped. That's a good point. That That's is a good very point. good point. Yep. Good point. Um, I think he's been overhyped because of the one play that he made at South Carolina and he earned a lot of, you know, got viral from it. But if you go back to that one year in Houston where, you know, he was playing opposite of, you know, multiple defenders with Whitney Merciless and J.J. Watt, he had a good year. So I think that he's better suited as, you know, kind of an edge rusher two rather than an edge rusher one. I think if you pair him with a guy like Miles Garrett, who's going to attract a lot of attention, I feel like this could very well be a relationship similar to what TJ Watt and Bud Dupree had. Bud Dupree's a good edge rusher. I don't know if he's going to be, you know, a good go-to edge rusher, but you put him across from an elite pass rusher, then he's going to have more production. I think we could see something very similar in Cleveland this year. So I think that this is a very big year for Jadeveon Clowney in terms of proving that he can get to the quarterback and stay healthy. Um, in terms of teams in the AFC North, man, I think Cleveland's probably far and away the best on paper right now. We haven't even had the draft yet. And so in terms of, I mean, as a Steeler fan, in terms of teams that scare me, Cleveland is very much at the top. And then a, a large gap down to Baltimore. And then Cincinnati's coming. They're not, I don't think, you know, too many fans are afraid of Cincinnati yet. But no, Cleveland, you see what they've done this offseason, adding Josh Johnson, adding, um, was it Nick Collins from the Rams as well, the cornerback. Um, and then adding Jadeveon Clowney. I mean, they have made... Not a lot of moves, but the moves that they've made have been significant. So I think that their defense has a case for being, you know, they very well could be a top five unit in football this year. And then you look on the offensive side of the ball. Oh, Odell Beckham Jr. is coming back. All right, that's good. Rushing attack with Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt, a good offensive line. Two really good, three really good tight ends. I mean, they took Harrison Bryant last year from Florida Atlantic. Um, and apparently David Njoku is also coming back. So, I mean, they've got three really good tight ends as well. So they don't have too many positions of weakness. The one weakness you can maybe point to is middle linebacker to get somebody next to Mac Wilson. But even then, I mean, they're, they're solid there at the very least. So uh, Cleveland doesn't have too many needs right now that are pressing. And that's a very good place to be pre-draft. Absolutely. You know, of the NFL for a long time. And then all of a sudden, this team gets stacked really quickly, you know, and, and it's not, you know, look, Baker Mayfield was the number one pick. You can disagree with that all you want, but right now, you know, with the way that, you know, they, they've got their new coach. I mean, I thought Stefanski should have been coach of the year, honestly, with the way they, or did he win coach of the year? Right. No, he did. Yeah. Yeah, he did. There you go. Um, And, and, you know, Denzel Ward, greedy Williams is still over there. You know, these their secondary is loaded, man. Like if they get anything out of those guys, it's it's incredible. And then you're talking about, you know, Johnson who who came from the Rams, had an incredible year last year. Very, now you're talking about good. Yeah, now you're talking about Miles Garrett with with Clowney on the other side, man. Cleveland is stacked, man. They really are. And and the thing is, is you know, I understand the health concern, but even if Jadavian Clowney gets hurt, they'll be fine. You know, when it comes to that, you know, I still think that Nick Chubb is one of the one, two, three best ball carriers in the league with the yeah. ball in his hands. Like it's like Derrick Henry, him and like Dalvin Cook, honestly, who, uh, you know, you don't want to see them coming at you with the ball in your hands. Like Chubb will run you over, but he'll also shake you up. So um, and then the Kareem Hunt thing, man, like I didn't understand where they were going with it, but it's clear that everything goes through the run. You know, Stefanski runs that variation of, of Shanahan's system, and it puts Baker Mayfield in good spots. Yeah, Cleveland's tough, man. They they really are. And, you know, for everything that everybody wants to talk about, you know, okay, the Chiefs, the Chiefs, the Chiefs. Well, you know, they had a chance to win that game last year. You know, if a call goes their way, a call goes another way, you know, and they don't give up that, what is it, that run to, who was it? Who the heck was there, their backup quarterback who on fourth down? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. That's gonna haunt them. That's gonna haunt them forever. That was their shot to like, you know, knock the king out right there. But Cleveland's on the rise, man. And I think that it's 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 really cool. And I think it speaks to more of the parody in this league, how quickly things can go from, you know, straight up laughing stock to a team that everybody kind of is looking at is on the rise and fears. And I think Cleveland is that, you know, if they load up on this draft and they and they hit on a few of these picks, they're going to be tough for a long time because they still haven't paid Baker Mayfield. And we all know that the, the team that hasn't paid their quarterback is the one that is is the most dangerous. And the thing with Baker Mayfield is that when it does when his time does come in terms of getting a new contract, they're not going to have to really give him, you know, a forty five million dollar deal. I think he'll be somewhere in you know the mid 30s in terms of what they can get him to. And as much as people want to hate on Baker Mayfield, seems like a guy who'd definitely be willing to take a few less dollars to make sure that there's a great team around him. Seems like a real team player. He's, yes, he talks a lot, but that's part of his mantra. And, you know, I really think that when the time does come, he'll be willing to be like, yeah, like I'll take a few less. Let's load up this team. Let's keep this thing going. So Cleveland's going to be good for a while. And you know what? How funny... And maybe it's just personally funny for me, but wouldn't it be really funny if the Browns and Baker Mayfield won a Super Bowl before Lamar Jackson and the Ravens did? That would just warm my heart. I mean, honestly, I can't see how anybody would argue otherwise at this point. Yeah. I mean, they're just they're just a better – they're a better roster. You know, and I think with the Ravens, it has nothing to do with Lamar Jackson. It has more to do with Greg Roman. I can't – you know, obviously for obvious reasons I can't stand him, but I'm just tired of the whole, you know, charade of – I'm going to show you that that we can run this, and then when everybody catches up, I'm not going to adjust. I'm just going to continue to, you know, just do what I'm doing, and that's it, and, and help Lamar Jackson regress. You know, we've seen this story before. I just don't understand how he continues to get work when the same thing happens over and over and over. But that's the good old NFL Boys Club League of just, hey, you used to have a job once. Cool, let's get you a job now, you know. And, and uh, yeah, I don't want to go too far on uh, uh, Greg Robin. So That's fine. No, why? You're going to make fun of him too? No, it's not even that. It's just the fact that Baltimore is – Baltimore doesn't scare the elite teams in the league. They don't. Mm-hmm. And you look at how Kansas City plays them. Lamar Jackson is, and the Ravens have never beat them. We go back to week three last year. He threw for 97 yards, and they just ran all over them in mm-hmm. terms of um, Kansas City just obliterating them. Uh, look at the game against Buffalo in the playoffs. And Buffalo wasn't afraid of him. You look at two games that he's played against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh isn't afraid of him. So that's great. You beat Tennessee. They're a good team. You can't, they haven't been able to beat any great teams when it matters, especially the top tier of the AFC. So until, unless Lamar Jackson really just has some insane revitalization and learns how to throw the ball deep, nobody's going to fear them because we have, they have the blueprint on how to beat them. It's absolutely stuff the run on first and second down and then make them put them in third and long situations where they have to throw. And we've seen more often than not, they're unsuccessful in doing so because they don't have the quarterback that can really do that. And, you know, that's not, I know that my, uh, my rap on Twitter is that I'm a Lamar Jackson hater. I think more or less I'm just a Lamar Jackson truther. So, you know, the numbers don't lie. He's not good at throwing the ball deep outside the numbers. And um, you know, teams, have, teams are starting to catch up with that. So, um, good luck against Cleveland twice a year this year. Baltimore, good luck against Pittsburgh with their still really good defense that have returned two guys that they originally thought that they lost. Good luck, Baltimore. I don't see them winning more than nine games this year. Let's see. I mean, it's more again, I'm I'm gonna lay it, I'm gonna throw it at the feet of Greg Roman, honestly, because you know, the receivers, the receivers don't you know, it's hard for him to throw outside the numbers because okay, maybe he he's deficient in that. But all those routes are, are like in the middle of the field towards tight ends. Like it's it's always the same thing over and over. And and again, it, it impeded it impeded Cap's um progressions. It, it you know, it's the same thing. Like it's the same thing over and over. Wash, rinse, repeat. And that's the part that that really gets me scared.